Evet, herkese merhaba. Ses ve görüntü var mı? Görebiliyor musunuz? Ve de slide görünüyor mu? En önemlisi. Evet, güzel. <gülüyor> Youtube'dan da canlı yayın başlattım. Arkadaşlarınız eğer buradan izleyemiyorsa oradan izleyebilir. Evet, today... <gülüyor> Başlamadan önce geçen hafta hayvanları anlatmıştım değil mi? Animal diversity. Evet, hemen bir bakalım. Evet, geçen hafta animal diversity uh, anlatmışız. So last week our lecture was being an animal. We have learned uh, the basics of animal life, uh, basics of animal kingdom. And today we are going to look at a little bit of more details uh, about the kingdom, uh, about uh, this kingdom, and we are going to see a little bit, not too much, just a little bit of uh, systematics. Uh, so, uh, just a little bit of animal systematics. Hold on a minute, please. I have to. Adjust my YouTube settings a little bit. No, okay. Because on YouTube the slide is too small. I see. I have to get it bigger, bigger, bigger. I think you don't have to see me in the. Let's push it a little bit. Right. Get it smaller. Now we can get a bit bigger and okay now i think it's better all right now it's better okay uh, today we are going to talk <coughs> about uh, invertebrates the uh, first group of animals we are going to see and then if we have time we will uh, talk about vertebrates as well uh, here we go invertebrates what are they basically as you can understand from their uh, gen uh, general name and in invertebrates are the animals that lack backbone animals without backbone are called invertebrates uh, 95 percent of uh, animal species which we know are invertebrates and invertebrates are found in every habit in the earth and they have an immense diversity of forms. They can be flat bilayer of uh, cells, six spanning glands, enormous variety in size. Uh, they can be microscopic to 18 meters long. Uh, I have to add just one more thing. Okay, I think it's going okay. That's fine. Uh, what are the So this is the origin of invertebrates. Basically, invert origin, uh, origin of invertebrates or ancestor of invertebrates are ancestor of all animals. We predict that those were protists, the ancestor of all animals. And by the way, ancestor of uh, invertebrates are uh, the protists. So we call this common ancestor of all animals. Uh, and the today living animal, the living animals which are alive today, which we can see today, uh, which are closest to these ancestors are sponges from Phylum porifera. Uh, and after that, we can split the Ometazoa. We are going to see the uh, details. Uh, a metazoa and uh, then we can see bilateralia, bilaterals. Now you will understand better what does it mean. So we will start from the most basic animals, sponges. So we are here on the uh, systematic table, porifera. Sponge means film porifera or sponges are classified in classified as film porifera. Porifera. Uh, those are parazoans, not real animals, because ometazoa means the real uh, animals. They are still animals, but 
uh, they have something missing to be an animal exactly but they still have a lot of properties of uh, kingdom animalia those are basal animals they are sessile so they are not able to move by themselves uh, there's a huge range in size from few millimeters to few meters uh, most species of uh, sponges are marine a few species live in fresh water and they are suspension feeders Complex sponges have folded body, folded body, wall, body walls. So to understand the animal body, it's always better to understand the simplest forms of animal body, and there, there, uh, that is exist in the uh, sponges. Many sponges have branch, branch water uh, canals and several oscula. Oscula is uh, plural for osculum, singular osculum, plural oscula. We are going to see what that means and the most important uh, properties of uh, sponges is they lack true tissues. There is no true tissues with sponges in sponges. They, that's why we can't call them real animals. That's why we classify them under uh, parazoa. Sponge body contains several different cell types. So there are different cell types different types of cells in the sponges that's why they are uh, that's important to learn the sponges so this different types of cells make them different than uh, protozoa or protista so that's why we call them animals so basically those cell types are coanocytes which are flagellated cells lining the spongo, spongo cell, amebocytes and epidermal cells. Okay, now please learn these. In a sponge's body, a sponge has three types of uh, cells, coanocytes, amebocytes and epidermal cells. Buraya dikkat edin. Daha başlangıçtayız ama ilk dikkat edilecek şey. Altını, bakın vurgulayarak vurgulayarak söylüyorum, altını çizerek söylüyorum. Ee, bir süngerin vücudunda üç tip hücre var. Üç farklı tipte hücre. Yani hücre farklılaşması burada başlıyor. Differentiation. Ee, süngerlerden itibaren hücre farklılaşmasını görebiliyoruz. Neler bunlar? Üç farklı tip hücre. Ee, süngerlerde bir süngerin vücut yapısında görülen üç farklı tip hücre. Koanositler, amebositler ve epidermal hücreler. Öğrenebilirsiniz değil mi? Öğrenebilirsiniz. Uh, you can learn this. So these three types of cells, different cells, but important thing with the same genome. These are produced from uh, or uh, these are descendants of the single cell of a single cell. At the beginning, the sponge starts the life, its life as a single cell. But after a couple of after a few cell divisions, the cells start to differentiate and when it when the uh, sponge completes its differentiation they have three different cell types coanocytes amebocytes and epidermal cells what are they let's see so this is a sponge in this picture in this photograph you can see this is a sponge and if we uh, look at that uh, as a diagram so there is an empty space a cavity in the middle of animal so this is the cavity and this is outer surface the outer surface of the animal is covered by the first type of cells which are epidermal cells okay these are epidermal cells and inside uh, the animal <coughs> the surface facing to the uh, cavity uh, there are second type of cells exist which are coanocytes so these cells are coanocytes so this is only one so if we look at one cell we can see the coanocytes coanocyte here this is a coanocyte and there is a third type of cell amebocytes amebocytes are present between the coanocytes and epidermal cells so 
in this picture, you can see the amoebocyte. So quinocyte, why we call it a quinocyte? Because it has color extensions. It has color extensions. This is uh, only one cell and these are its extensions. And it has, it also have, it also uh, has a flagellum. So this is a quinocyte. This is an amoebocyte. Amoebocytes are motile cells. They have motility. They can move inside the body. Şimdi burayı kısaca bir de Türkçe anlatıyorum. Şimdi bir süngenin vücuduna baktığınız zaman bize ne diyebilirsiniz demeyin. Çünkü üniversite seviyesinde genel biyoloji alıyorsunuz. En azından bir süngenin yapısını bilmek zorundasınız. Bilmeniz lazım. Ben de sorarım. Bilmeyeni de geçirmem. Şimdi neden sünger önemli? Çünkü en basit hayvan yapısı bu. En basit hayvan vücudu süngerin vücut yapısı. Ne var bu süngerin vücut yapısında? Ve de bu e, hayvan vücudunu anlamak için de son derece önemli. Hayvan vücudu bizi niye ilgilendiriyor? Çünkü biz insanız ve insanlar da hayvandır. Dolayısıyla insan vücudunu anlayabilmenin en güzel, en kolay yolu e, en basitten başlayarak en basit hayvanın yapısında ne var ona bakmak. Şimdi e, hayvanın genel yapısına baktığımız zaman, süngerin genel yapısına baktığımız zaman orta tarafında bir boşluk var. E, Buna spongosol deniyor veya spongiosol deniyor şu boşluk. Buraya suyu alıp boşaltıyor. Suyu alıyor ve bırakıyor. Şimdi e, süngerin dış tarafı, süngerin vücudunun dış tarafı birinci tip hücre, hücrelerden oluşuyor. Bunlar epidermal hücreler. Şurada altıgen altıgen gösterilenler epidermal hücreler. Epidermal hücrelerin aralarında e, şu şekilde boşluklar var. Por denilen boşluklar. Ve bu boşluklar süngerin iç tarafındaki, orta tarafındaki büyük boşluğa açılıyor. Dışarıdan gelen suyu bu boşluklar aracılığıyla alıp e, ortasındaki e, spongosol denilen boş kısma alıyor. Arkasından da e, oskulum denilen açıklıkla, şurada oskulum diye bir açıklık var. Bu açıklıktan dışarı e, boşaltıyor, dışarı püskürtüyor. Bu arada suyun içindeki, suyun içinde bulunan besin maddeleri Kolar hücreler tarafından şu pardon koanosit hücreleri tarafından alınıyor. Şimdi ikinci tip hücremiz koanosit hücreleri. Koanositler de hayvanın iç tarafındaki boşluğa bakan hücreler. Nasıl hücreler? Kolar uzantıları var. Ayrıca bir de flagella yapısı flagella yapısı var. Üçüncü tip hücre koanosit hücreleriyle epidermal hücreler arasındaki kısımda gezen, dolaşan hareketli hücreler bunlar da amibosit hücreler. Neden amibosit diyoruz? Çünkü amiboid hareket yapıyor. Amido amiboid hareketten geçtiğimiz derslerde bahsetmiştim size. Uh, all right. So these are amibosit cells, these are collar cells. This is the basic main structure uh, basic structure of a sponge. Okay, this is another picture of the sponge. Uh, this is the picture I've shown previously. Alright, body. Sponge body consists of two layers of cells. A gelatinous region is found between two layers. Then, what are the functions of amoebocytes in the sponge's body? That's an important question. Most sponges are hermaphrodites. Fertilization occur in the mesohyl and the zygotes develop into flagellated swimming larvae. Defense sponges produce a variety of antibiotics. Uh, before this, I have to answer this question. What are the functions of amoeboid cells in the sponge's body? Let's go back to this picture and look at the uh, anatomy of the sponge. What do you see here? Uh, we said we have epidermal cells. Epidermis is always epidermis. That's Uh, function to protect the body from out from outside uh, and inside we have collar cells and collar cells are responsible for internalizing the food material so they do phagocytosis and they intake the food material the nutrients in the water and they pass these nutrients to the Amoeboid cells. Amoeboid cells carry these uh, nutrients to different cells of the body, especially to the epidermal cells. Şimdi uh, burada üç tip hücre var dedik. Uh, bunlardan birincisi epidermal hücre. Epidermal hücre uh, bütün organizmalarda olduğu gibi uh, süngerlerde de uh, 
en başta hayvanın vücudunu dış ortamdan ayırmaya yarıyor. Ondan sonra hayvanın vücudunu dış etkenlerden korumaya yarıyor. Peki ondan sonra en iç tarafta bulunan hücrelerimiz burada gördüğünüz kolar hücreler veya e, koanositler. Koanositlerin görevini, koanositlerin görevi süngerin iç tarafı aldığı, iç tarafındaki boşluğa aldığı suyun içinde bulunan besin maddelerini fagosite etmek. Bu besin maddelerini fagosite ederek önce koanositler alıyor. Arkasından aldığı bu e, besin maddelerini şurada gördüğünüz kofullar aracılığıyla, vakuller aracılığıyla e, amibositlere aktarıyor. Amibositler hareketli hücrelerde hatırlayacaksınız. Vücudun her tarafını dolaşan hücrelerde. Bu hücrelerde bu besin maddelerini, amibositler bu besin maddelerini vücudun her tarafına dağıtıyor. Vücudun diğer hücrelerine ulaştırıyor. Özellikle epidermal hücrelere. Evet, amibositlerin görevi bu. Next, radiata. The uh, second uh, group of animals. Uh, radiata, animals with radial symmetry. Uh, the first group in uh, radial symmetry is Filum cnidaria. Those are ometazoans. Cnidaria are ometazoans. They have true tissues uh, and there is a wide range of diversity. Ses they can be uh, sessile or motile. So they both exist, the sessile and motile forms. Examples are hydras, corals, jellies, So three examples for uh, cnidaria, film, uh, film cnidaria. Uh, body plants, their uh, body plants is uh, important. They are diploblastic animals. They have radial symmetry, and basically their body form is a sac with a central digestive component, which we call gastrovascular uh, cavity. They have only a single opening, and Two variants of this body plan. There are two variants of this body plan. One polyp, two medusa. All right. This is the polyp body form, and this is the body form called medusa. Uh, they have, as you can see, their body stalk, and inside there is a. They have a cavity, and this cavity opens outside with one opening. This is. This open, this opening, uh, functions as mouth and anus. <coughs> also, these animals have uh, the extensions called tentacles, and this empty space, actually, it's not really empty. This cavity is called gastrovascular cavity, and gastrovascular cavity is surrounded by a cell type called gastrodermis. The external side is covered by epidermis, the uh, structure called epidermis. And between epidermis and gastrodermis, there is a structure called mesoglia. Some cnidarians exist only as polyp or only as medusa. But others, some others, have both uh, stages during their life, a polyp stage and a medusa stage. stage. Cnidarians are carnivores. They use their tentacles to ca capture their prey, and digestion in the gastro di they do digestion in gastrovascular cavity. Tentacles are armed with cnidocytes. Nematocytes are specialized organelles uh, with cnidocytes that eject stinging thread. All right, this is a tentacle. When we look at the detailed structure of tentacle, there are some st special cells which are called nematocytes. And nematocytes have a special structure which is called <coughs> uh, kinet, that's a thread. They push this thread into the prey's body and they poison them. The film cnidaria have contractile tissues. Contractile tissues are seen even in the simplest forms of cnidaria. Cells of epidermis and gastrodermis have bundles of microfilaments arranged into contracted fibers. The gastrovascular cavity acts as a hydrostatic skeleton. The nerves are seen in the film cnidaria. 
Movements are coordinated by a nerve net. Net earth, it should be nerve. There is no brain in the cnidarians, no central, no, no central nervous system, and there is no uh, sensory structures. Sensory structures are distributed. Actually, there are sensory structures, but they are not connected to each other, or they are not connected to a central nervous system with the nerve nets. Sensory uh, structures are distributed through the body. Film cnidaria is divided into four major classes. Those are hydrozoa, scipozoa, cubozoa, and anthozoa. F four major classes of cnidarians. All right, hydrozoa, an example for hydrozoa, scipozoa, cubozoa, anthozoa. So these are what I, what uh, I want to say about cnidarians. Uh, actually, there, uh, there are a lot to talk about these cnidarians and sponges, but since you are molecular biology students, I don't think you need that much uh, animal uh, systematics. Just to have an idea, I prefer to give you these lectures. Bilateralia. So, the, our next group of animals are bilateralia, animals with bilateral symmetry. Those are triploblastic animals and digestive tract and solom. They have a digestive tract and solom. Many of major groups first appeared during Cambri Cambrian explosion. We are going to see what Cambrian uh, explosion means. And there are three major clades, Lophotrochozoa, Ectisozoa and Deuterostomia. The first group Lophotrochozoa, I think I'm going to pass these. Evet, Lophotrochozoa'yı geçiyoruz. Ee, sadece e, şunları görün, bir e, fikir sahibi olun. Ee, the example group, the example animals in this group are annelids, film annelida. They have segmented body. Annelids are solomates. The film annelida is divided into two groups, polycats and oligocats. An example, earthworm and the structure of earthworm. Şimdi e, sizden bunların ayrıntılarını istemiyorum. Sadece e, fikriniz olsun diye söylüyorum. Sınavda da sadece benim anlattığım kadarından sorumlusunuz. E, zaten bunları not olarak da size göndereceğim. Ders notu olarak da göndereceğim size. E, Ektisazoa, what are they? Uh, defined primarily by molecular evidence and nematoda, arthrop nematoda and arthropoda. Okay, arthropoda is important. Nematodes are important too. Uh, film nematoda are round worms. They are found in aquatic, most in aquatic uh, habits and also soil. Uh, moist tissue of plant of plants. Uh, body fluids and tissues of animals. Nematode uh, body is not segment. There is no segment in body of nematodes, and they have an exoskeleton. Model organ model organism is uh, sorry. The model organism C. elegans, this is elegans, is an example for nematoda. Şimdi uh, model organizm olarak en yaygın kullanılan hayvanlardan bir tanesi uh, C. elegans. Uh, Kainarabditis elegans bu bir uh, nematod. O nedenle uh, bu da resmi C elegans duymadık demeyin. C elegans der bazıları Türkiye'de. C elegans, Kainarabditis elegans bu önemli bir molekül, model organizmadır. Moleküler biyolojide çok sık kullanılır. Uh, importance of nematodes. C uh, elegans is a model, or, model organism. Some species of nematodes are important parasites of plants and animals. Uh, what else? Trichinella spiralis can be acquired by humans from un uncooked, uh, undercooked uh, pork, and they can be uh, dangerous parasites. Film arthropoda. Next, film arthropoda. Two out of every three known species of animals are, are arthropods. More than one million arthropod species have been described. 
most of them are insects. Members of phylum Arthropoda are found in nearly all habitats, habitats of uh, the biosphere. And the most successful animal phylum is Arthropoda. Their body plan success of arthropods is related to their body plans. Characteristic of arthropod body are segmented body, hard exoskeleton, jointed appendages. Uh, these three characteristics, these three uh, properties are characteristic to arthropods. This is trilobit. Şimdi bu trilobit en yaygın görülen fosillerden biri bu trilobit uh, fosili. Bu bir artropod. Tabi e, günümüzde çok daha fazla artropod yaşıyor. Gördüğünüz bütün böcekler her şeyden önce artropod. En kolay görebileceğiniz artropodlar böcekler. Um, artropod evolution is characterized by a decrease in the number of segments in and increase in appendage specialization. These changes may have been caused by changes in Hox genes, uh, Hox gene sequences and their regulation. Arthropods evolve, uh, segments tend to fuse, become fever, appendages become specialized for variety of functions, and result is division of labor among different body regions. Appendages are specialized in functions, for example, walking, feeding, sensory reception, and defense. Appendages are jointed and found in pairs. All right. Uh, segments, I said, these are each another segment, but mainly segments are grouped in uh, three regions, head, thorax, and abdomen. In abdomen, mostly uh, the digestive and reproductive organs are exist. In thorax, mostly uh, organs required for movement. And in the head, the, sense, uh, the central nervous system, may, uh, the center of center, central nervous system, and uh, sensory organs, and also the mouth parts are present on the head. Exoskeleton arthropod body is completely covered by a cuticle, layers of proteins and polysaccharides. Functions of exoskeleton is Protecting the animal, providing points of attachment for the muscles, and when an arthropod grows, it molds its exoskeleton and it produces a new one. Sensory organs, well developed sensory organs, are present in the uh, arthropod bodies, eyes, olfactory receptors, and antenna. Most sensory organs are uh, concentrated at anterior of animal. Circulatory system, they have an open circulatory system. Uh, they are hemophil, hemo, uh, they have hemolymph, and arthropods are celomates, so they have a cavity called celom. In most species, uh, celom forms in embryo but becomes reduced during development. Hemocell is the main body cavity. Uh, there are different groups of arthropoda, calicrates, myriopoda, hexapoda, and crustacea. Uh, calicrates are sea spiders, horseshoe crabs, scorpions, ticks, mites, and spiders. Myriopods are centipedes and millipedes. In hexapoda, the most important group are insects or the most important group is insects and crustacea, crabs, carps, lobsters and shrimps. So these are all animals you know from your environment. Insects, subfilum hexapoda, hexapoda. Uh, insects and relatives have more special, no, more species than all other forms of life combined. Insects live in almost every terrestrial habitat and in fresh water. The internal anatomy of insects includes several complex organ systems. All right. uh, as you can see in this diagram, the insect body again 
is divided into uh, three main components, main regions, head, thorax, and ab abdomen. If we look at that, uh, the same thing can be seen in the uh, insect body because they are arthropods as well. Uh, the different functions are localized in different regions of the body. Flight is one key to great success of in in uh, insects because they are the some most of them are the animals which are able to fly. An animal that can fly can escape predators and find food and disperse new habitats much faster than other organisms can only crawl. Many insects undergo metamorphosis during their development. Metamorphosis. I'm sure you have you heard this term before. In incomplete metamorphosis, the young, called nymphs, the, uh, which resembles adults, but they are smaller and go through a series of molds until they reach full size. Insects with comp complete metamorphosis have larval stages, stages known by uh, structures names as, named as maggot group or caterpillar. The larva stage looks entirely different from adult stage. As you can see in this picture, the larva is totally different than its adult. Reproduction in animals, uh, sorry, reproduction in uh, insects. Most insects have separate males and females and reproduce sexually. Individuals find and recognize members of their own species by bright colors, sound, and odors. Some insects are beneficial as pollinators, while others harmful as carriers of diseases of, or uh, pests for, uh, of crops. Insects are classified into more than, three, more than 30 orders. So it's a... Uh, there's a huge diversity in the group of insecta. Crustaceans, what are they? While arachnids and insects thrive on land, crustaceans, uh, for the most part, have remained in marine and fresh environments, freshwater environments. Crustaceans, subphylum crustacea, typically have branch app branched appendages that are extensively specialized for feeding and locomotion. Small crustaceans exchange gases through the cuticle. Larger crustaceans have gills. Echinoderms and chordates, those are called deuterostemia. Echinoderms include sea stars and sea urchins. And chordates, film chordata, include the vertebrates, rest of the animals. Echinoderms are, and chordates constitute the clade Deuterostomia. Echinoderms, sea stars, and most other echinoderms are slow-moving sessile marine animals. A thin epidermis covers the endoskeleton of hard cal calcareous uh, plates. And echinoderms have unique water vascular system, a network of uh, hydraulic canals branching into two feet that function in locomotion and feeding. Males and females are usually separate and sexually uh, reproduction is external. External reproduction or uh, external fertilization is seen between echinoderms. All right, a sea star, an example for echinoderms. Most adult echinoderms have radial symmetry with uh, multiples of five. Echinoderm larvae have bilateral symmetry. All right, please look at this table from your books. And this is all I want to tell about invertebrates for today. Uh, any questions about invertebrates? Omurgasızlar hakkında soru sormak isteyen var mı? Evet soru yoksa 10 dakika ara veriyoruz. YouTube'u kesiyorum. Ve de 10 dakika sonra buradayız. YouTube'dan yeniden canlı yayın başlatacağım.
10 dakika sonra omurgalılar. Vertebrates. <gülüyor>